to this very special lecture. Um, and uh, I, I, I welcome Dr. Joseph Bara, someone uh, who needs little in introduction, but uh, as for formalities go, um, uh, I will be in introducing him. Uh, Dr. Joseph Bara is an eminent scholar of tribal history for formerly with, with JNU. He is the author of several articles such as Alien Construct and Tribal Contestation in uh, Colonial Chodanagpur, the Medium of Christianity, Western Education and the Rise of New Identity, Mundas and Orangs of Chodanagpur, 1839 to 1939. Um, setting the record straight on Birsamunda and his political legacy are some of the uh, many articles which Dr. Bara has written. Uh, and he was with JNU for almost three three decades. And it's it's an honor that all of us are here uh, are able to to listen to him today. Uh, the chair for the session will be Professor Bipin Jojo. Professor Jojo is currently professor at the Center for uh, Social Justice and, and Governance at Tata in Institute of um, Social Sciences. Uh, he's also the, the, the co-founder of Tribal in Intellectual Collective in India. Um, and, uh, we are, and I'm personally, I'm very glad that uh, both of them ag agreed on such short notice to come and deliver the lecture. Uh, there has been a request that the lecture be in Hindi, so I leave it up to Dr. Joseph, where he can deliver in English as well as Hindi, so that audiences who are uh, familiar or com comfortable with either, either lang language um, can understand it. Um, the lecture is being recorded and will be shared uh, both via Facebook Live as well as a, as well as a YouTube video. Uh, as in when um, this lecture is recorded and processed. So just a quick uh, out, out, outline here. Um, uh, first of all, I request all of you to uh, kindly mute your mics. And once the lecture is over, we will have some preliminary ob observations and reflections from Professor Jojo, following which we will be, we'll be opening it up uh, for question and answers from, from the audience. Uh, so this is the larger structure that we have uh, thought for today's lecture. And without further ad ado, I invite Dr. Bara to kindly deliver his lecture today. Dr. Bara. Thank you very much, Ashish. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can hear you. Yes, I'm a slow speaker, so you will have to remind in case you can't hear. No, please, please. Remind. Please. And yes. Thank you very much for organizing this lecture. And I'm very happy to have a very friendly chairperson, Professor Jojo. Uh, and happy new year to all of you. Uh, well, uh, I don't know how far I'm up, up to your expectations. You know, <clears throat> Jepal Singh is left in oblivion, actually. Now, <clears throat> average young people uh, may know him as part of the general knowledge on India for answer in Korn, uh, Barrega, Karotpati, etc. Uh, as an Oxford educated person, captain of Indian hockey, uh, hockey team in Amsterdam, Olympic, uh, or and uh, uh, leader of the Jharkhand movement. Now, politicians ritually remember him on his birthday, uh, his grave at his village Takra, and other memorials are in most dilapidated condition. Now, I prepared this talk as you said, in a short notice. And you must congratulate me. You, I, I brave the you know, festival season. Uh, everybody would mock at us, people like us. What are you doing in this festival season? 
but somehow I managed to prepare some, but this is, uh, I'm sure it's not going to be up to, the, up to your expectation. I was rather reluctant to do this, but then certain occasions are auspicious, is the birthday of Japan team. And then at least if nothing, something there should be for discussion. So I may be a little general, and you asked me to speak in Hindi, but perhaps, you know, uh, I'll mix up and I may not be, but I'll speak layman's English. I mean, everybody can understand. Uh, very simple. Um, yes. <clears throat> Japan Singh is remembered for his contribution to Indian hockey mainly. Now there is a stadium at Ranchi named after him. He's less known about his more important contribution in, de in deciding the destiny of the Adivasis. And according to Adivasis, a place of self-respect in the Indian nation. His legacy can be distinctly be glimpsed in the, uh, in, in, the, in his organizing and leading the Jharkhand movement since 1939. And discussion at the Constituent Assembly leading to the, as we know, shaping of the instrument of safeguards of Adivasi interest in Indian constitution. Now, well, there has been a cult of Jepal Singh. Jepal Singh has been a cult, uh, you know. Uh, I, as a child, I remember, yeah. His uh, name always everywhere spread. And actually, uh, he was a cult, he was a you know, model for young people. No, I had my own pipe dream of joining Oxford. Thanks to my elder brothers learning about Oxford Association of Jepal Singh. He used to tell him, like Jepal Singh, you should also go to Oxford. <laughs> Actually, I indeed dreamt of going, but at uh, that time, you know, that the overseas scholarship for STSCs was, uh, you know, discontinued for humanities. I missed it. Uh, anyway, uh, but that cult of Jepal Singh was unmistakable in 50s, 60s. The Jepal Singh deserves it. There are a uh, few writings on Jeff Palsy. Um, a few writings, actually, but whatever exists, uh, they present an image uh, very negative. P.C. Ganguly, one of the an anthropologists who perhaps wrote uh, the first. Uh, um, article on Jepal Singh in 1969. Now, he outrightly called him separatist. India is, you know, heading for separation. I mean, there are separatist tendencies in India, uh, even after independence and, those, and, 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 and even as the nation, Indian nation was progressive and even after independence. And Jeparsi was a specimen of that breed of separatist. Now, there are a few writers, I mean, journalistic writers. One of the journalists is Balbir, Balbir Dat, Ranshi Bay journalist, now an old man. But uh, from the beginning to the end, he presents a very negative, he has a very negative portrayal of Jeparsi. Now, there are other some journalistic writings. They fail to, the other local writers who fail to histori historicize uh, the contribution of Jepal Singh. Now, 
Jay Paul, she should have written something because he is an ace writer and uh, he's, he had a powerful pen. Uh, but unfortunately, his autobiography written in late 60s before his demise is very sketchy, very sketchy. Now, it doesn't reveal many things, doesn't explain, doesn't clarify many things. Now, as a person of history, I myself feel uh, guilty having failed to work on him. Uh, somehow, I have been reading about him, but not been able to do, although I always thought of doing something on Jay Palsy, but somehow I failed. And uh, today's talk is actually fragments of some of the thoughts I gathered uh, the long uh, for uh, reading for long years here and there. I'll try to organize, but uh, I may I may not be a good presenter today. But uh, you will have to excuse me. But I'll try my best. Anyway, birth of Japan in 1930, uh, 1903 coincides with you know the government uh, government of Bengal. Act of 1903 that was that that was passed by the British to protect the Munda Kutkati track from enco encroachment by landlords and was the precursor of the Shotanagpur Tenancy Act and the Tenancy Act 1908. And as we know, this paved way to create the background for the protection of the Adivasis under the Indian constitution, where Jaipal Singh played a spectacular role. Now, the act of 1913 came as a sequel of the Besa movement. Uh, this was a turning point of the Adivasi history in Chotanagpur. Besides being compelled to take steps for the protection of the Adivasis, the British government initiated administrative development of the region, which opened avenues for white collar job opportunities. The Adivasis had already lost land considerably and the present government measures for protecting the exist existing rights assured the tribal that, that the long standing agrarian issue was now a settled matter. The situation thus then directed the Adivasis towards new form of livelihood by government show. This urge was strong. An association called Uram Munda Siksha Sabha was plotted by the educationally backward non-Christian Adivasis. The association really very interestingly forbade membership to those who had been associated with the Sardari movement, Sardari Ladai movement, and the Birsa movement. It arranged funds, this association arranged funds for education of the needy young Adivasis. Strong urge also forced three central mission middle schools at Ranchi to be upgraded as high schools. Now, St. Paul's School, Ranchi, of the Anglicans, the school of Japan Singh was the first to be upgraded. And it flourished remarkably during the first decades of the 20th century. When it was at its best, Japan Singh joins this school in 1910 and continues till 1919 when he was taken to England by Canon. Crossgrave. Now, recalling his favorite student days at St. Paul's, Canon uh, Crossgrave describes Jay Parsi as a brilliant student, always first in the class, good at sports, especially in football and hockey. He was captain of the hockey team of the school. He described, his, Jaipal Singh described further as positioning 
leadership quality and inclined to sociable. Now, in the fertile environment of England, especially at St. John's, Oxford, these qualities of Jay Parsi were to prosper and become a standing feature of his personality. Now, with talents and proven leadership qualities, Jepalsi enters public life with high profile uh, career ever since he led the Indian hockey team at the Amsterdam game and elite elite lifestyle for a decade. He he was the Adi, how was the Adivasi in Nepal in the in the is there in the region that is the village Takra. It was a Kutkati area where Mundas were able to had been able to protect the uh, uh, the Kutkati line tenure system. Now, you know, he was also, and this was the area actually, you should remember, also the area of the Birsa movement. Because Mundas were very aggressive in protecting themselves. They were very particular about their identity. And this is the area where most of the leaders, later leaders have come from. And many of the revolts, in fact, originated from this and the adjacent uh, Sibum area. Now, he was educated, his initial education, uh, education was at St. Paul's. Imagine, this was a school of the Anglicans. And Anglican church were very, uh, kind of, you know, very uh, Puritan type. They wanted to, they were out to reform the Indian, like any missionary of the time. And uh, they were out to reform the tribal culture. Hmm. They say that all, there are all, all elements in the tribal society were not good. Those cultural elements like dance, drink, need to be refined, need to be checked. Hmm. So now Jepal Se was part of that education. He was then immersed in the elite lifestyle. Yet, you know, there are hints. His Adiv Adivasi in him did not die. In 1928 Olympic final, he abstained from participation as captain. Uh, he, there was a whisper that he abstained because, you know, team was dominated by elite Anglo uh, Anglo Indians, and they had a feeling that how could we play under the tribal, under the Munda. So there was a whisper that he abstained from playing in that. That was there. Then few other hints. You know, his marriage took place at Darjeeling. It was a very high profile social gathering. Now in that social gathering, no, there was no tribals, Adivasis obviously, but Japan Singh eyes were fixed on uh, Munda, his driver a smiling Munda. He records this in his autobiography. Next. Uh, he, he, he says in his autobiography, autobiography, the singing and dancing 
in B owes to my Adivasi background. Whatever singing or dancing I am adept in owes to my Adivasi affiliation, Adivasi background. And at Rajkumar College, Raipur, he learned that some sections uh, of the students and parents were against his being there as a teacher. He was aware of it. So his identity as an Adivasi was life. Though it was latent, it was not expressed. He had strong cultural roots. It was life. In 1939, in his maiden address to the Adivasi Mahasabha at Ranchi, in January 1939, he mentions how fondly he remembered the last wish of his guru, Canon Crossgate, that he should return to lead his people. And the way he espouses Adivasihood is remarkable. That it was, it could not be instantly so vigorous had there been no latent uh, uh, identity feeling Adivasihood in him. Now, before to decide and serve his fellow Adivasis, perhaps on the suggestion of C.F. Andrews, I'm not very sure, I read it a long time back, but I don't remember who, but I think it was C.F. Andrews. Having family connection with the Congress, at the behest of the national leaders, he approached the Congress, uh, Bihar Congress leaders, even showing his choice of serving in the field of education and sports. But the local leaders feared his presence and sat over the proposal. At last, being nudged by the top leaders, he was offered some position, but in a very humiliating manner. This is available in his probably the autobiography. Now, in what context uh, Jepal Singh lands in Shutnapur, Ranchi? You know, there was during the time uh, <clears throat> the also uh, had that kind of wrangle. Now in 1912, Bihar was separated from Bengal, was internal colonialism in Chotanagpur region, tribal region. There had been, but uh, this hegemony of Biharis and resting of all jobs openings uh, by them was very common. And uh, you see, there was also this time, simultaneously, first generation Adivasi graduates emerging in the post Birsa movement phase. And an, an organization called Chodanagpur Unati Samaj came. It was a pan Adivasi forum of the Adivasi graduates to protect and promote the Adivasi interest. And actually, this was a search for development that is quest for development. How Adivasis could be developed, uh, could develop, finding ways, paths. That was the idea of this forum. Now, in 1928, this organization, Shotanagpur Anati Samaj, presents a memorial. I mean, it's incidentally, this was the time when Japal Singh was busy leading the uh, hockey team. That year, this forum presents a memorandum to the Indian Statutory Commission 
and they ask for autonomous administration outside Bihar. And uh, later, this, this Adivasi, uh, this, this Shotanakur Unati Samaj converts into a political outfit. Uh, outfit. The same uh, Unati Samaj uh, converts into Adivasi Samaj. You know, this Adivasi Sabha, Shotanakur Unati Samaj, or Adivasi Sabha lacked some kind of dynamic leadership. And it was also a localized movement. It is against this background, then we see what was the need of, you know, it's a question worth asking. Shotanakur was a generic, generic name. It included some parts of even uh, uh, present Chhattisgarh, some parts of Orissa, Sambalpur, etc. Some parts of Ibram Bengal, Santal Paragna was certainly included. Shotanaku means there was understanding that it was a comprehensive region, tribal region of this area. Now, what was the need of the term Adivasi? So, nowhere explained by any document, but the contest is notable. This is the time when S.C. Roy book, the Mundas and their country had been published in 1912. Since then, he... This was also the time around 1930, the writings of J.B. Hopeman, the person who uh, wrote Encyclopedia Munda. Doc Dr. Mara, your, your voice is breaking. I think we've lost uh, the connection with Dr. Bara. We'll we'll try to get him back. Dr. Bara, can you can you hear us? You have to un oh, wait. Please un unmute yourself, sir. Okay. Yes, yes. It is better now. I think these this is the perennial problem with Zoom. I think yeah. Yes. So if you can speak a little slow, I think. Uh, you, I, I think the pace is quite good, but just if you could speak a little more slowly, I think then I think it will not break. I think then it will be more stable. Okay, little, little slowly. Yes, yes. Okay. And then okay. I think it will be much more stable. Okay, okay. Yes. Now I'm very poor in these things, so you'll have oh, to tell I, me. All of us are, mm. all of us are grappling with this. So. <laughs> okay. Anyway, <clears throat> what I was saying is, you know, the Encyclopedia Mundarika of J.B. Hoffman had come. And uh, also it was followed by the writings of P.O. Boding on some thoughts. So my feeling is that the term Adivasi So we have lost you again. Dr. Bada, we have lost you again.
I think there seems to be some internet problem on, on his side. Wait, I'll just. Sir, can you hear us? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, can I don't you? Know. Yeah, I think there's some. Yeah, there's some. There, there might be some fluctuation from your side, but it's all right now. Can you shift the screen, please, a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Yes. Hopefully, it should not. Go I will. Uh, I have alternative one now ready. Yeah, link now. Yeah, don't number ko. Yes. Uh, so, if you could repeat, we had uh, you had just uh, stopped at JD Hoff Hoffman's. Yes. 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 No, this was also a time when I was J.P. Hopper and I, I said, Encyclopedia Mundarika came nine, around 1930. First few volumes came around 1930. Uh, then it was followed by the writings of P. P. O. Body on Santals. His dictionary came, I mean, it was almost everywhere, all, all over the world, it was uh, widely known and reviewed in the journals like American Association of Anthropologists, etc. So widely known. So I don't, so probably Jaipal Singh was aware of this, Shotanapur Unnati Samaj people were aware of this, and they chose the, they opted for this term Adivasi. So that is one thing. The next is, you know, this was also a time when Indian nationalism for the first time addressed the Adivasi issue. Remember the Dalit issue was being addressed by Fulin since the late 19th century. Now, Ambedkar, uh, you know, this depressed class mission, then Ambedkar, address the Dalit issue in a big way, but Adivasi issue, issue was somehow not that prominent, not that taken up by the Indian nationalist. So modest beginning was made by the servant of India society. This society um, that came into existence in 1914 made a beginning as a famine related work in Eastern Gujarat in the Dahod area. Uh, uh, and it was led by A.V. Thakkar, who later became Thakkar Baba. And it was famine, there was around in 1918, there was a famine and the tribal were worst hit. So this began and, uh, you know, uh, this was the first. Uh, this this gave way to broader nationalist social work. Then, you know, around that time, 1920s, Arya Samaj also took up some social work among the tribals. Then, you know, from around 1930. There was regular social work among the Adivasis under the edges of the term, uh, under the edges of the Indian National Congress. This was the time when various Elmin IPRs, and this was also the time that Congress adopted A. B. Thakkar. So he was a follower of Gandhi since the non-cooperation movement. Then he shifts all his program under the edges of the Congress. Now, there was, uh, among the Veal, he founded Veal Seva Mandal. Then among the Gold, 
where he had ever been, floated Gaur Seva Mandal. And in Chotanagpur, soon after Rangar Congress in 1939, uh, there was a branch of the Adivasi Seva Mandal. It was started at Gumla, some 90 kilometers away from uh, Ranchi. Uh, this, was the so this was for social work based on Gandhian ideas. Now, this was the context of the coming of Jatar uh, Singh. Now, Adim Jati, the word Adim Jati, has a meaning. You know, tribals, this means tribals are primitive, uh, lesser human beings. They are, culturally, they are the subculture of Hinduism. So that's why all method of social work was to make them advance and mainstream in the dominant culture. And there is actually, it was argued that there was very negative retro, tribal culture as such was retrograde. Now, if there has to be development of the tribal, tribal have to be taught. I mean, in school, they have to be brought in some uh, central places, in ashrams, and in ashrams, they are refined and this ashram is totally away from the tribal habitat. And here they are trained as so-called advanced culture. Hmm. So that was the approach. So against this background, Jack Palsi comes. Now, if you see his, how much is the time left? Oh, uh, we, have, we have time, sir. We can... Yes, I think I'll take 10 minutes or so, then yes. we can be open discussion. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> this is the context of the coming of your policy. Now, as I said, his tribal identity was latent and it became life uh, ever since he came in 1939. He, he was completely devoted to the tribal cause. Now he's rooted in the tribal culture, coming from, hailing from that uh, is a culturally strong uh, area, uh, culturally strong Munda area. It's revived and then he articulates to protect the Adivasi, promote the tribal culture. So his mobile is, I mean, his oratory, I mean, that was, he had the skill of oration. He was uh, president of the debating club of Oxford, uh, St. John's. So he had the skill. He charmed by his, uh, the audience by his address. And the mode of his home mobilization, I mean, all these years, that paternalistic of idea was being promoted advocated everywhere by the, uh, by the workers of the Indian National Congress, by the workers of the Adim Jati Seva Mandal. Hmm. And this Adim Jati Seva Mandal was actually, there was a few non-tribal, non-adivasis, but they were controlling everything. Hmm. In Gumla, for instance, outsiders were probably one dozen, and there were tribal members some few hundred, 200 probably. But then all control was with the outsiders. So a typically, typically paternalistic attitude control that, that could be seen. Now, Jepal Singh was totally against it. He sees how to, he, uh, he uh, works out a strategy, how to break this cloud of paternalism, and then internal colonialism. This is the two areas where his action is directed. He organizes his, uh, his meetings 
in remote areas. Hmm. Some of the sessions of the Adivasi Sabha and later it became Jharkhand Party in 1947. That was in very interior areas. And Jepalsi always wanted to move, uh, always wanted to communicate. In the beginning in 1939, he speaks in English. Probably he was not deficient to speak in, in the local language. But he was versed. Soon he was versed in several languages. He knew Santhali, Munda, Arya, Sadri, of course. So once actually in the constituent assembly debates, he, he was accused that he is an elite most of the time. He is in the clubs, he is in the uh, enjoying life, middle class life and elite life in Delhi. So then he was agitated and he, he challenged a person like Thakkar Bapa, who was considered the supreme leader, supreme uh, patron of the uh, Adivasis. Hmm. And uh, people rose uh, to their uh, rose and say that, uh, you know, you cannot really blame uh, the uh, uh, accused uh, person like Thakkar Bapa, a respectable person. Then he say, now, since you have said that, you know, I'm an elite, I'm, uh, I'm enjoying life, middle class life here, he says, how many languages you know? He challenged the participants in the constituent assembly debate that I speak this many languages. So this was his strategy of mobilization. Then next, he promotes tribal cultural resources. He talks about Dhumkuria. He talks about uh, local dialects, languages, uh, being the medium of instruction in school. He talks about the various cultural features that should be promoted. So this is how then actually he refers in this context, you know, he refers to Roy, he refers to Hoffman, he refers to P.O. Boding. So then he actually, his colleague, Julius Tiga, organizes Dhumkuria School which was Dhamkuria, you know, it was night, uh, evening dormitory system where this was the center of cultural education of the, of the uh, Adivasi youth. So on the edifice of this, he wanted to, uh, Julius Tiga and Jepal Singh and other leaders wanted to impart education on the basis, a Western education on the basis of this. So that experiment was there at Ranchi, it failed because, you know, obviously money, money was, funding was not there. So this is how then he, because, you know, the tribal was being advocated, uh, as always being presented as a lesser, as a culture of the lesser human beings. He, he was really animated on this issue. You know, that famous statement of, I don't have to learn civilization from others, but I have to teach. This he said from the beginning, from 1939, that great procession of the Adivasi Mahasabha. Adivasi Sabha actually became Adivasi Mahasabha since 1939. He always advocated that. Tribal culture is an autonomous culture. It, you know, it is a unique culture and it has its own value system and tribal society should develop. There is no direct evidence that he influenced
I think we seem to have lost connection with him. I'll I'll try to bring him back. I think we are on the end of his talk, so just please bear bear with us. Sir, can you hear us? Hello. Dr. Bada, can you hear us?
I think we have Dr. Bara back with us. I think he was facing some problem. We'll just, Dr. Bara, can you hear us? Hello. Yes, uh, can you please switch on your video? Yes. Start video, yes. You can hear oh, me now? Yes, yes, yes. We can hear you and, and see you. Good. Uh, Good. Very sorry. No, no, very sorry. sorry for this. No, uh, all right. Probably because I'm a village person, I live in a village, so this is the problem here. Uh, but anyway, yes. I let me continue hurriedly now. Yes. Uh, well, I was saying that I don't know how, uh, but through what channel, but you know, Jepal Singh was a high pro profile person by uh, late 40s and in certainly 1950s, uh, 1950s, he was meeting Nehru at various clubs, forums, social life. Then the, he was a rapt listener of Nehru also, uh, Jepal Singh also. I'm talking about Nehru. So it seems the idea of Adivasi that Jepal Singh often uh, advocated had a message in Nehru. In 1948 onwards, you know, all this NEFA question was there and Nehru was certainly thinking more in terms of NEFA. But then he was also thinking of the larger uh, Adivasi uh, India and Varya Elvin was there who was his advisor later, but he was always in the company of uh, Varya Elvin. So Jepal Singh, it seems, delivered a message. His idea of Adivasi was delivered to Nehru. That's why the Pan of 1958 advocated by Nehru that all development has to be based on the genius of the tribal, the genius within code of the Adivasi culture. And there is, there should nothing be imposed on the Adivasis from outside. This is the famous principle advocated by Nehru and on the basis of that, there was a commission Im immediately, in the UN Debar Commission scheduled uh, areas and scheduled tribe commission in 1960. Jepal Singh, he was always the dissenter. If you see the constituent assembly debate, if you follow, he was always a dissenter. He wanted the word Adivasi, not Adimjad. And he wanted to protect the tribals more holistically. Hmm. And the fundamental rights should have a special amendment so that there are no non-tribal in the tribal areas owning land. So he wanted it to be more stringent. And, but that did not happen. And, but he was a, the lone fighter to get the tribal justice. Then, you know, he, the scheduled uh, partially uh, excluded and excluded areas committee by the Constituent Assembly. This was chaired by Thakkar. Now he writes a, a, a decent note in that. He actually two decent notes. So always he, for, this, for the protection of the tribal interest, he dissented with, uh, at various forums. But he was a member of the scheduled areas and scheduled tribe commissions of 1960 is silent. It seems he smilingly signed that report. So, you know, we have a sad 
phase of his life after 1960. Now we don't have to go in that episode of history. He was, dis he was in a bad condition, uh, living a forlorn life at Ranchi and he died almost uh, a forgotten hero. Let us not remember that, but then his legacy in terms of getting the, getting the Adivasi justice. He was a lone fighter. There was five members in the constituent assembly. I mean, tribal Adivasi members, but most of them were mute. They would not speak. It was on the shoulders of the, of the of Japal Singh to defend the tribal language. Uh, uh, tribal interest, and that he did valiantly. And th that is his legacy. What has happened there, 1950s, there was a series of discussion for the first time, uh, time on Adivasi issues. It was, uh, all these were organized by Adim Jati Seva Mandal. That time it was renamed as an old India uh, organization, Bhartiya Atim Jati Seva Mandal. Jeparsi was never a participant in that. But from outside, he always voices concerned at the Lok Sabha debate in various other forums. And on the eve of the birthday of Jeparsi, I think this is worth remembering. What with the idea of Adivasi Hood? that he advocated and he promoted and he devoted his whole life. I end here and let us have a discussion. And if you have any queries, you have door, many of you may be better informed than me. You can comment on me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Bara, for that very um, uh, stimulating lecture despite the fact that you were facing several technical problems from your side we are very grateful that you first of all ac accepted our invitation on such short notice and also delivered this very timely and pertinent lecture uh, so i hand i hand hand over the session to professor bipin who can uh, initiate a brief observation and reflection on this lecture and then maybe we can open it up for questions from uh, from our participants professor professor jojo yeah yeah thank you hasis yeah, it, it was indeed uh, very, very enriching talk uh, by Professor Joseph Vara. Uh, yeah, in fact, I, I am I'm hearing him after a long time. Unfortunately, we were also not in touch for some time, but it was, it was very, very enriching and uh, uh, very stimulating to hear uh, Professor Vara uh, on this uh, new year and especially on the eve of uh, 118th birthday of Jaipal Singh. Uh, very, very, I think, important points. What, what I am unable to hear. What, what makes me um, realize after listening to Professor Vara, uh, very, very nicely he has taken us through the historical context of uh, the tribal situation before Jaipal Singh got into the Chotanagpur area. And, and thereafter, his um, engagement with the issue of tribes or Adivasis in India, and especially uh, Chotanagpur area. And, and I would say the special role on the contribution in the Constituent Assembly. I, th I think he has taken us through uh, uh, his, his talk. I, I, it reminds me some of the key character of Japan. See what he talks about. Um, people generally know him as a great hockey player and the captain of uh, 28 uh, Olympic. 
but but people never acknowledge him or accept him as a great adivasi leader and and his contribution for the cause of adivasis in the country i think i think that is one very very important point uh, professor vara has made it and i think it it makes us to uh, ponder upon to to reflect on to uh, take it forward uh, for uh, for for our uh response a reaction or 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 as our responsibility i think as um, uh, adivasi intellectuals secondly he he was very very uh, rich and very strong adivasi in terms of his identity despite being high profile as professor para said he he lived a life of very very elitist or high profile life he he most of his life until he came to india he was in oxford in uh, uh, england and so he had very very uh, western modern uh, um, lifestyle and after coming to india also he he maintained certain high profile lifestyle despite that despite that he was always an adivasi and he was always proud of being adivasi and he never forgotten about his identity and culture i think that is a very another very very important point i think it it is for us to think over he was a fighter he was a lone fighter in the constituent assembly as as we know uh, especially if if we have read the constituency debate if not full i read some of the readings if we have made and was what a very rightly has he was the lone voice of adivasi in our constituent assembly debates um uh he was a strong communicator orator culturally uh, rich resourceful he he was always for to create that how tribal cultural resources to be uh, promoted um and and how how to overcome the internal internal colonization i think these are the very very important points uh, professor vara has um uh, uh, made through and and he was a very strong dissenter i think as a lone voice and as a lone dissenter in the constituent assembly i think always he was ridiculed in the constituency assembly most of the time he was ridiculed uh, by by thakkar and other group uh, uh, for for all the points but but i think what what does it mean to us the people who are here who are listening to this uh, great uh, um, talk and and we are observing in commemoration the, the, the uh, we are, we are here in, com in commemoration of 118th birthday of japal singh i think it is great great important um, uh, lesson for us to take it forward that what what does japal singh imply or, or what does japal singh mean for us today i think that that is a great a uh, question in front of us and all of us should reflect on that what does japal singh mean to me mean to us as a tribal intellectuals or educated mass either in in as social activists either in the public sphere either in academics or whatever life we are living in but what does japal singh mean to us as an adivasi i think this is what this is one of the question i think we we have to uh, question and as as we see that as sarvara also has mentioned that dalit issues were raised by ambedkar phule he started with phule but later on uh, ambedkar issue uh, ambedkar raised the uh, dalit issues and 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 he became lone figure for dalits in the country and no there is no dissenter or no second person who can contest ambedkar however in case of tribes i think we 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 do not have a single personality a person who can stand alone adivasi or tribal face in the country we have every region every state every region if you go to northeast nicholson roy and others are there in rest of the india we have many other uh, uh, figures however despite multiple faces we have who who is a lone figure who is more or less pan indian figure or pan indian face probably japal singh there is no other face so so if if we have to gather and we if we have to take we have to create adivasi discourse around his values around his adivasi values and the principles and his vision i think we have to work engage on some of, some of his visions 
and and create adivasi discourse otherwise as, as uh, professor wada has mentioned that there are writings some of the non adivasis have written and derogative writing negatively portrayed in in tis uh, professor wada we and santosh ji we had started a study group among the phd scholars we we started with uh, reading uh, and discussing about the constituency assembly debates and and we we looked at that most of the writings uh, uh, by, by our non adivasi friends have looked at from their position and and so if you read it they are they are, they have portrayed or pictureized very very negative or selfish or or very very derogatory uh, sense and so as we adivasi i think it is our responsibility to to uh, revisit and recreate jaipal singh and we have to regenerate re give the rebirth of jaipal singh in in our discourse in our engagement in our debates in our writings okay i think i think that is that is what is i i feel is great responsibility for all of us and unless we do that i think we it will be very unfair and it will not be uh, correct for us to gather here or to observe this commemoration of this 118th birthday of japal singh i think it will be it will be very painful for us to uh, complete our uh, professional responsibility or complete our accomplishments if if we are not able to do something for for the vision what japal singh had started what what the, he has created his, his struggle his descent his leadership his um, work his challenge i think everything if you look at i think we we have to uh, 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 take take this forward so with this brief um, uh, word uh, note i i would request uh, our friends colleagues um, in this platform to to share your brief uh, either question or brief note uh, for uh, we, we may not be able to have long discussion but at least we can have a brief questions or notes or observations um to professor bara uh, to begin with and then maybe we can have few uh, minutes of few some time for discussing uh, that uh, how how do we engage with uh, japal singh so um, may i request you all to uh, raise your hand uh, if if possible so that i can i can call uh, one by one for to make your points uh Professor Jojo, there are some questions in the in the in the chat box, so yeah. I think we can start with that. Yeah. I think Ganesh has a question. I think his question says, I think his uh, the main theme of his question is, what would be the the major difference between Dr. Am Ambedkar and Jaipal Singh, while looking at the tribal question? What were the various, what were the different perspectives, uh, and the key. point of difference between dr Am ambedkar and jaipal singh when they come to particularly in terms of constitutional safe safeguards and their broader outlook towards tribes okay can you can you take a couple of more questions yeah, okay. uh, then then professor bada can respond professor bada yes okay um, maybe we can take uh, two two questions at yeah. at the same time and then then we can we can yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, professor arjun has a question which says Jaipal Singh's demand for the for using a word adivasi in, in instead of tribal was not accepted by the constituent assembly did Jaipal Singh continue his demand when he was a member of of parliament if yes how was he how was this demand met by the then government led by nehru okay yeah um, yeah professor professor wada can we can we get your brief response you may not be possible to have elaborate one but at least some brief response professor bada yes can you hear me yes please yes i mean you know that we had you know observers uh, on jaipal singh are very unfair to him you know they attack on his personal life i mean if you read Uh, whatever few writings you have, uh, they attack him personally. Now, whose personal life will you criticize? Nehru to Ambedkar. Hmm. 
But why Jaipalsi is single out? That's the question. I think this is because he is an Adivasi, a lone Adivasi uh, advocate of the Adivasi cause. And, you know, when <clears throat> authority on Jaipalsi, alien or geriat, um, uh, visited uh, me sometime in a uh, conference, I asked her the question. Was there a dialogue between Jepalsi and uh, Ambedkar? Uh, she could not. She started opening his, her thesis written some 30 years back, and she could not find much. There hasn't been any dialogue. I don't know why. Similarly, Xavier Elvin, they were supposed to be friends at Oxford, contemporary. Uh, Ox, uh, Frenchy died at the Oxford campus friendship here in the field. But if you read Verrier Elvin's autobiography, there is one or two passing reference of Jepalsi. I think one or two, just passing reference. Whereas who can deny that he was a theorist on tribes? you will hardly find any reference. Ambedkar, no, intelligent man, well-educated, great authority on constitution, on law, economics, etc. But then on tribe, his understanding was like any other national leader. Here are the tribes, simple people, probably not intellig uh, intelligent people, so the standard understanding on tribe is that these are the people who are most vulnerable to be duped, misguided. So that's why nice. many writer, academic writer I'm talking about, they say they are most prone to be victims of the, they mean Sadivasis, are prone to be victim of dividend rule policies, anti-national policies. Now in 1939, at the height of the, the, the Jharkhand movement, under the leadership of Jepalsi, there was a writing called Bihari Bandar Nacho, a poem in Adivasi, the organ of the Adivasi Sabha. And there was a sedition case against that. A few years later, the chief minister of uh, the, the leader of uh, uh, the chief minister of Bihar, he was heard saying, you know, I will sometime drop bomb and destroy, drop a bomb in Shotanapur hmm, to destroy the movement. Was this not anti-national? Why that was sedition case on the Bihari Bandar Nacho? That was a, a political movement. But this is nowhere this is mentioned that you know the bomb dropping. Hmm. This was a typical uh, terrorist statement. This was ignored. So my point is, Adivasi, even now, the man in the state understanding of tribe is, you know, very, uh, rather a misunderstanding. Tribes are not understand. Hmm. If you go to the, uh, man, uh, to the normal state and ask who are the estates, oh, they are another estates. That's an understanding. Understanding tribes from tribal point of view. Hmm. That is sorely lacking in this country. Hmm. When I say I'm a tribe, people will look at me. Oh, you're a tribe. Oh, how could you be a tribe? If there is some smart looking boy or girl, how could, he, could you be a tribe? So these are the kind of conception of tribe in this country. So this is nothing, the type of Cloud of the nationalist idea of tribe that I tried 
to explain is deeply entrenched in the Indian psyche. Hmm. That continues. What happened? What happened after, after, after say, uh, Nehru's assertion of tribal genius? Series of meetings have taken place. Hmm. What has happened? No one remembers Nehru's statement. 1989, I followed the Nehru's centenary celebration. There is a book on the Nehru and tribe, forgotten. Hmm. In, in terms of implement, in, 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 in so far as implementation of the idea of tribe and policies, you don't find any reflection of it. This is the state. This is the situation we have. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yes, Asis. No, no. So you can you can go ahead. Yeah. Yes. The other one, other 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 uh, question, I could not. Yeah. I yeah. don't remember. What was that? Uh, he uh, the the question was by was from Professor Ar Arjun. He he said that Jaipal Singh's demand for using the word Adivasi instead of tribal was not accepted by the constituent assembly. Did Jaipal mm -hmm. continue his demand when he was the, the member of parliament? If so, if if yes, how did he respond to the then-led government by Nehru? I think the main well, question is that I, I think the main question is that the word Adivasi has not been for, formally ac accepted by the Indian con, um, con, constitution. So how uh, how did he respond to such a uh, uh, such a mass um, like position by the central government? Well, Nehru's idea how he formed in a short time is worth pondering. As a Western education man, uh, Harrow and all these. Now he rediscovers India. Whether his rediscovery of the tribal was proper, I mean, it was after proper meditation, I doubt. He was a romantic man. Rather, most, many of the intelligentsia, uh, uh, non tribal intelligentsia, uh, intelligentsia have a very romantic view on tribes. Romantically, he acted. Wait. Hello. Yes, sir. Sir, we had lost you for some time. Can you please? Yes, yes. I was saying yeah. Nehru was a romantic man. Hmm. So far as the idea on tribe is concerned. Now, many of many of the uh, intellectuals, intelligentsia are actually. Hmm. And India, don't forget. You know. It has a layered history so far as tribes are concerned. Unlike in the West, you know, the Westerner goes all of a sudden, extermin exterminates the local people, indigenous people, and these indigenous people start asserting. Then the First Nation term, etc., come. In India, we have a heaps of history, suppression of the tribal successively. Mm -hmm. And tribal calling indigenous people means they will always say the Santhals were uh, in the Santhal Pargana only since the early 19th century or 18, early late 19th century, or uh, sorry, late 18th century or early, early 19th century. Uh, so Mijos were there only for the 500 years. You see, who will go, who is going to tell us that they were the, even in Santhal Burgna, they were the first persons to reclaim the virgin land, which Mundas always said, we have snatched the land from the fang of the snake or the jaw of the tiger. This kind of feeling. And the kind of you know the culture, distinct culture, culture they developed. Who is going to make them understand? It's not the years for how long you have gone. 
even in terms of years, many of the rudiments, I mean, uh, the, the uh, artifacts of, say, uh, Indus Valley civilization area or this area, you corroborate, you may find the traces of tribal culture, but that's very difficult sometimes to prove. But there are certain, there are, this is very clear, the tribals were the, were the occupant and the inhabitant of the tribal areas for a long time. Hmm. So instead of chasing the wild goose of proving history, tribals always uh, uh, assert that they are the first people to clear land and uh, live in the partic particular area. Whereas here, history is denied. This history is denied. This is very different from the Western situation. And that's the bone of contention and that, that historical wrong that has been done for centuries is denied. Whereas in the West, it is recognized. Even there, after recognition is after taking away everything. That is another point. But at least the token of recognition in the West is there. In India, you know, never forget that permanent forum doesn't uh, uh, is not recognized by India. Hmm. Always there are some until uh, some uh, tribal friends, Adivasi friends from India go and participate in those deliberations of, of the UN permanent forum. But India never recognizes that because of this dilemma, because of this, uh, the idea of tribe we have that. So that's the situation. Professor Jojo, you can continue. There's one question from uh, Dr. Vasavi Kiro. And okay. uh, she is, I think the question is, what is her contribution? I think the question pertains to how, I think there's, there was one more question. How do we see Jaipal Singh in, in con contemporary times? How should we follow his lead in today's context? I should answer. Yeah, okay. Uh, Priyanka okay. has a, a, sir, if you can just wait for one, one minute. Priyanka has one okay. question. Priyanka, can you, okay. can you, on, can you ask? Johar said, Johar. This is that you history ko uh, history of city ko trace kar rahe hai, uh, mm. Jaipal Singh Munda ke ka. To us sense mein mujhe uh, Jaipal Singh Munda bahut hi political person and politically conscious person and apne culture or identity ko bhi bahut hi unse usse bhi sambandhit bahut conscious mujhe wo lag rahe hai. To us aadhar pe uh, 15 अगस्त 1947 में भारत आजाद हुआ और उसके चार महीने बाद 1 जनवरी 1948 को खरसावन फायरिंग होती है तो और अगर हम हमने जब 1947 में हमने सोचा कि हम एक कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन की बात करेंगे तो हम एक नो मॉडर्न नेशन की तरफ बढ़ने का कदम रख भी रहे थे तो मॉडर्न इंडिया में आ, जब डिबेट भी चल रहा और एक तरफ Directly, इतना बड़ा नो हो गया आ, दलित उसको फर्स्ट जनवरी को दलित आ, अपना सोशन दे देखता है हाँ बट हमारे हमारे हम न्यू ईयर जरूर बना रहे हैं लेकिन उस और थर्ड को हम जयपाल सिंह मुंडा का बर्थडे भी बना रहे हैं लेकिन फर्स्ट को हम क्यों नहीं उसको उसको हम क्यों नहीं एक्नॉलेज कर पा रहे फिर उसके इर्द गिर्द वो रेसिस्टेंस या डिस्कोर्स को हम आज के टाइम पे एज एन एकेडमिशन उसको कैसे हम आर्टिकुलेट करें या कैसे उसको कंसेप्शनलाइज करें कि हम उस डिस्कोर्स को अभी भी जिंदा रख सके थैंक यू प्रियंशर देखिए जयपाल सिंह का विचार को आगे बढ़ाने की जरूरत है इतना इजी काम नहीं है इतना सहज काम नहीं है देखिए 
जैसे जयपाल सिंह का विचार था उसी के बाद में सब सुनने के बाद में बहुत सारे उनके विचारों को नकार दिया गया कॉन्स्टिट्यूंट असेंबली में और शायद जयपाल से बहुत खुश हुए नेहरू के कथन के बाद में उनके जो सिद्धांत जो है उन्नीस सौ में आए लेकिन फिर वो आया चला गया 1969 में शिमला में बहुत बड़ा कॉन्फ्रेंस हुआ ट्राइबल सिचुएशन इन इंडिया उसके ऊपर एक किताब है ट्राइबल सिचुएशन इन इंडिया करके जिसको सब तरफ पढ़ी जाती है बड़े बड़े विद्वान उसमें निहारंजन रे डी आर मानकेकर बड़े जर्नलिस्ट खूब जितने इंडिया के नोटेबो विद्वान थे बुद्धिजीवी थे उन्होंने भाग लिया लेकिन वही आइडिया ऑफ ट्राइब वही आदिवासी पर विचार पुराना विचार बड़े सलीके से उसमें काम कर रहा था डी आर मानकेकर का उस प्रोसीडिंग्स वो अवेलेबल है पढ़ी है डी आर मानकेकर का या तो जो है वो मैंने कहा कि जो है निहार रंजन रे उस समय के टॉप इंटेलेक्चुअल थे उनका उनका लेख पढ़िए वहाँ प्रोसीडिंग्स वो पढ़ी तो मेरा यही कहना है कि आप जैसे जवान विद्वानों के कंधे पर बहुत बड़ा रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी आदिवासी क्या दुख की बात यह है कि हम उसको खुद भूलते जा रहे हैं आदिवासी हम क्या है उसको ये भूलते जा रहे हैं आदिवासी को अब ये सबसे खतरनाक परिस्थिति मेरे ख्याल से जबकि उस आदिवासी पना जो है जयपाल सिंह ने जो है हमें बताया हमारे पूर्वजों ने बताया जयपाल सिंह उस उस हमारे संस्कृति के एक स्पोक्समैन के रूप में थे तो उस संस्कृति के फीचर्स को कैसे जाने और उसको कैसे जो है असर्ट करें वो हमारे लिए बहुत बड़ा चैलेंज है मैं तो पढ़ता हूँ बड़े बड़े विद्वानों को रेगुलर पढ़ता हूँ जर्नलिस्ट जर्नल जर्नल्स में वगैरह में जो भी जो है आदिवासियों पर है टिका टिप्पणी कोशिश करता हूँ मैं जानने की वही पुरानी एक जो जो चला हुआ है धर्रा आदिवासी के बारे में सोच वो तो चल रहा है तो मेरे ख्याल से जयपाल सिंह को पढ़ना उसके स्टेटमेंट को समझना और खासकर उन्नीसवी शताब्दी के बाद में कुछ कुछ हमारे बीच में अभी लिटरेचर है जिसको हम नहीं छूते हैं ओपन की किताब एस सी रॉय की किताब पी ओ बॉडी की किताब ये मिशनरी थिंग का अपना प्रॉब्लम था लेकिन ये लोग मिशनरी होते हुए जो है एस सी रॉय वकील थे ये अपने प्रोफेशन से निकल के बहुत गहन तरीके से आदिवासियों को देख कर उन्होंने लिखा इनको हम लोगों को पढ़ना पड़ेगा अपने को मजबूत आदिवासी बनाने के लिए केवल नाच गान से नहीं होगा नाच गान हमें भी बहुत अच्छा लगता है वो हमारी संस्कृति का एक जो है बिल्कुल सामने का मुखौटा है लेकिन उसके पीछे के वैल्यूज को ध्यान देना है या गंगाराम आई थिंक दैट इज व्हाट सवाल पूछिए आवाज आ रही सर मेरी हाँ हाँ बिल्कुल आ रही है मैं सुन पा रहा हूँ सभी को जोहार सर आज के सत्र में बहुत दिन के बाद आदरणीय जोसफ बारा को सुनने हम सब लोग को मिल रहा है मेरा सर यही एक क्वेश्चन है मेरा कि हम लोग जो भी आज हमारे बुद्धिजीव लोग हैं जो शिक्षाविद हैं अभी तक हम लोग इतने अच्छे जो रोनाल्ड जयपाल सिंह थे जो हमारे बीच नहीं रहे 
उसके बाद हम लोग एक भी उस तरह के व्यक्तित्व को आ, हम लोग क्यों नहीं बना पा रहे हैं ये एक बहुत बड़ा क्वेश्चन मार्ग है और उस आजादी के समय या उस समय एक ही जयपाल सिंह उस समय के समय एक जन्म भी लिए उन्होंने हमें एक नया रास्ता बनाया है लेकिन उसके बाद हम लोग बहुत सारे लोग शिक्षित हुए यूनिवर्सिटीज में अगर राष्ट्रीय लेवल में देखा जाए तो जीएनयू देखा जाए या टीस देखा जाए या अदर स्टेट्स में जो भी यूनिवर्सिटीज रहे हैं बहुत सारे आदिवासी लोग शिक्षित हुए उसमें खासकर हमारे जो सेंट्रल स्टेट की बात करें उड़ीसा मध्य प्रदेश झारखंड में भी लेकिन अभी तक उस सिंड्रो में एक भी लोग हम लोग को क्यों नहीं मिल पा रहा है और इसका क्या कारण है और जो लोग भी शिक्षाविद आज के इस जयपाल सिंह जयंती के इस समारोह कहा जाए या इसके जो हम लोग याद में आज हम लोग जो सोच रहे हैं उसके लिए हम लोग के पास एक रोड मैप अभी तक हम लोग क्यों नहीं बना पा रहे हैं ये एक बहुत बड़ा हम लोग के लिए चैलेंग है तो मैं यही सुनना चाह रहा हूँ या उन लोग से आग्रह करना चाह रहा हूँ कि आने वाले पीढ़ी के लिए सर एक क्या रोड मोट एक रोड मैप आप लोग क्या बना रहे हैं जिससे जो लोगों में एक आदिवासियत भी बचे और जयपाल सिंह के थीम को जो एक ट्राइबल लीडर जो नेशनल सिंड्रोम में उस समय उन्होंने एक पदार्पण किया अभी हम लोग उस सिंड्रोम में क्यों पदार्पण नहीं हो पा रहे हैं तो इस संबंध में मैं चाह रहा हूँ कि सर कोई स्ट्रेटेजी है या कोई प्लानिंग है जो भी शिक्षाविद ताकि हम लोग भी उसके रास्ते में चल सके और आने वाला पीढ़ी भी उनको स्टडी करके एक नेशनल सिंड्रोम में एक इंटरनेशनल इंटरनेशनल सिंड्रोम में लीडरशिप को डेवलपमेंट करे उसके लिए हम सोचते हैं कि सर क्या योजना है हम लोग उन चीजों में भी विचार करना चाहिए ताकि आने वाला कुछ सालों में या कुछ वर्षों में जयपाल सिंह की तरह बिरसा मुंडा की तरह या अदर कोई रिनाउल्ड जो हमारे लीडर्स है उनको हम लोग बना पाए तो मैं ये जो लोग भी बुद्धि जी लोग से मेरा एक क्वेश्चन धन्यवाद सर जोहार धन्यवाद धन्यवाद गंगाराम जी आपके विचार बिल्कुल सही है वो मानते हैं कि वो जरूरत है मगर ये ये बिंदु पे मैं सोचता हूँ प्रोफेसर बाड़ा के परमिशन से कि और संतोष जी मैं सोचता हूँ कि हम लोग लास्ट में कुछ दस पंद्रह मिनट इसके बारे में चर्चा करेंगे कि क्या होना चाहिए तो क्या कर पाना चाहिए तो क्या होना चाहिए इसके बारे में थोड़ा सा आखिर में थोड़ा सा चर्चा करेंगे उसके पहले मैं प्रोफेसर खाखा से सुनना चाहेंगे उनके कुछ विचार या पॉइंट प्रोफेसर खाखा मेरी आवाज आ रही है जी जी हाँ नहीं आ, अच्छा लगा डॉक्टर बाड़ा का जो लेक्चर सुन के कुछ हिस्टोरिकली पर्सपेक्टिव मिले मैंने बहुत पढ़ा नहीं है लेकिन आ, मैं जस अगर वो रेस्पोंड करना चाहते हैं तो अच्छा नहीं रहेगा ये तो दूसरे लोग है मुझे दो तीन चीज बहुत खटकती है एक तो ये है कि कॉन्स्टिट्यूंट असेंबली में ठीक है आ, हम, आ, आदिवासी जो मेन लैंड इंडिया में रहते थे उनको जो संविधान में जो मिला वो बेसिकली एक कॉलोनियल कॉलोनियल कॉन्टेक्स में जो था वही कंटिन्यू किया गया लेकिन उसके बहुत उसके विपरीत जो है नॉर्थ ईस्ट में एक इनोवेशन हुआ इन द सेंस के एक उनको एक सेल्फ गवर्नेंस का एक इंस्टीट्यूशन दिया गया ऑटोनोमस डिस्ट्रिक्ट काउंसिल तो जयपाल सिंह को क्यों उसके दिमाग में नहीं आया है कि ऑटोनोमस डिस्ट्रिक्ट काउंसिल जब भी या तो बहुत कॉन्फिडेंट थे कि झारखंड मिल जाएगा झारखंड झारखंड स्टेट मिल जाएगा क्या वो था इसके कारण उन्होंने डिमांड नहीं किया या अगर वो नहीं था तो फिर जो नॉर्थ ईस्ट में उन्होंने डिस्ट्रिक्ट काउंसिल के लिए डिमांड किया और एक मेनी स्टेट उस समय उनको मिल गया जैसा कि आसाम की मैं जो मिजोराम को या मेघालय को उस प्रकार का संभावना हो सकती थी फिफ्थ शेड्यूल एरियाज में भी जो कि अब हम लोग कुछ हद तक बहुत हद तक सोचने के लिए बाध्या है भी तो ये मैं सोचना चाहता हूँ कि वो वो क्या उन्होंने कभी रेज किया या ठक्कर बापा के साथ उसके विषय में मुझे मालूम था कि ठक्कर बापा वगैरह कभी उसको देने की कोशिश नहीं करेंगे बट क्या कुछ एक्सचेंज हुआ है बिटवीन ठक्कर बापा और जयपाल सिंह के बीच में इस चीज को लेकर एक एक क्वेश्चन से दूसरा ये है कि हम लोग कभी आई थिंक नेहरू को बहुत ज्यादा ही समझ हाँ रोमांटिक था नोस्टालजिया था लेकिन मुझे कभी बहुत ही वो लगता है कि उसके जो हम पंसिल के बातें करते हैं और बहुत उसको क्रेडिट देते हैं कि उसका ये विजन था और हो सकता है कि उन्होंने जयपाल जयपाल सिंह से आइडिया लिया या एलिमेंट से लिया लेकिन नेहरू ने जो डेवलपमेंट इनिशिएट किया 
नॉर्थ ईस्ट में नहीं लेकिन मेन लैंड इंडिया में जो इनिशियट किया है एग्जैक्टली उसके विपरीत गया जो आपने पंसिल की बातें की उसके एग्जैक्टली द वे ही वॉज वर्किंग आउट थिंकिंग ऑफ डेवलपमेंट विच इज इंटायर अपोजिट की आप जमीन ले लीजिए इम्पोज कीजिए उनके रिगार्ड नहीं कीजिए तो वही तो हो रहा है आपके पूरा मेन लैंड इंडिया में या तो राष्ट्रपल बिहार लीजिए राष्ट्रपल उड़ीसा लीजिए या राष्ट्रपल मध्य प्रदेश लीजिए एक प्रकार का इस प्रकार का सिचुएशन चला तो इस कॉन्टेक्स में कैसे हम लोग नेहरू को कहें कि भाई वो थे थोड़ा हमारे शुभ चिंतक थे या क्यों आ, क्या कहते हैं जयपाल सिंह को क्यों ये आइडिया नहीं आया कि भाई एक कंस्टेंट रही है उसके अंदर में हमें क्या अगर नॉर्थ ईस्ट वाले मांग रहे हैं इस प्रकार के इंस्टीट्यूशन अरेंजमेंट तो क्या हम लोग उसको उस, उसको डिमांड नहीं कर सकते थे क्या ये थोड़ा सा मेरे एक वो है अगर जो सिर्फ इसको वो करना चाहते हैं थर्डली ये है कि हम लोग कभी कभी बहुत ही जो भी हम लोग अपने ट्रेडिशन के विषय में बात करते हैं हमारा कल्चर हमारा वैल्यू जो ऑलवेज भी हम लोग सोचते हैं कलेक्टिविटी का है लेकिन हम लोग एक लीडरशिप जब सोचते हैं तो हम लोग एकदम पूरा मॉडर्न कॉन्टेक्स में आ जाते हैं कि हम लोगों को एक आदमी चाहिए तो एक हमारे ये में कंट्रास्ट है कि एक हम और हम कह रहे हैं कि हमें ट्रेडिशंस कॉन्टेक्स्ट हमारा अपना होना चाहिए लेकिन जब हम पॉलिटिकल सिचुएशंस को सोचते हैं कि हमें जयपाल सिंह जैसल आदमी मिलना चाहिए निकल सोए जैसा आदमी मिलना चाहिए तो हम लोग वही इंडिविजुअलाइज कर रहे हैं हम लोग हम लोग वो यही पैटर्न अडोप्ट कर रहे हैं जो कि मेन लैंड इंडिया अडोप्ट कर रहा है अभी बोलते हैं आदिवासियों के पास लीडर्स नहीं है भाई तो हम लोगों को उस चीज को भी कंटेस्ट करने की जरूरत है तो थोड़ा सा क्यों जो मुझे लगा कि इस कुछ मेरे विचार मुझे थोड़ा सा लगते तो मैंने आपकी बात बहुत कुछ जी जयपाल से जैसा आपने कहा शायद वो बहुत कॉन्फिडेंट था झारखंड अचीव करेंगे असल में जयपाल सिंह का लाइफ का ब्रॉडली दो फेज था पहला फेज जब वो ही वॉज एट इज बेस्ट एलिमेंट देन ही वॉज वेरी कॉन्फिडेंट दट ही विल अचीव झारखंड एंड मेनी ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम्स विल बी सॉल्व बट देन आई थिंक ही वॉज ए टिपिकल मिडिल क्लास पॉलिटिशियन ही डेविएटेड फ्रॉम हिज गोल्स and then he was more of you know like any politician he was seeking positions after positions and then so that was certainly a side part of the personality of jepal singh but then nehru's ideas it came as a flash and uh, you know i don't think there was a will for this i don't see i mean in all his all the deliberations of 1950s and 60s on tribal issue there was a, a series of conferences old idea of uh, of tribe and development always tribe so you know political leadership has been very insincere about what nehru said So that's uh, I, I uh, certainly I agree with you. And uh, how to promote a political culture? It's a very difficult task. I don't know what's the answer. You know, tribal neighbor talk about this strategy. More think in terms of political parties. Political parties always, you know, the type of political parties we have, the kind of. mobilization based on discussion uh, meditation thinking about what the tribal culture is and what the direction it should take i think certainly there is dearth of thinking this is what i would like to submit okay yeah there was there was a question i think i had missed uh, Ganesh ji had some question. I think how how do you see the difference between Ambedkar and Jaypal Singh? I think where do they depart from each other? Any any comment on that? Oh, Ganesh. Yeah. Ganesh Maji. Ji ji. 
ओके इज इट गणेश माझी यस यस गणेश माझी नो इट्स अ व्हेरी कॉमन क्वेश्चन आई मीन एवरीबॉडी थिंक्स अबाउट दैट आई मीन वेल बोथ हैव देयर ओन मिशन एंड i think conflicting personality as i hinted i don't think they communicate and i mean sometime all you know the two leaders don't see eye to eye i i, I think that was the situation and had discussion many of the issues were common but they ne- there is never a dialogue there is I, i don't see i mean i tried to go through the ambedkar papers in volumes i could not trace and as i said delhi near junior the greatest authority the uh, on ambedkar she could not answer me this so i am i am also unable to see why i mean they were both champions they were very sincere very honest about their you know uh, political objective of getting justice to their respective social groups uh, but why they don't join that's a big question had they joined probably the history of india would have been different okay okay so i i don't see any any other hands or any other questions or observations on the chat box uh but um uh, we have uh, um ruby with us in the group ruby you you have any comments or observation to add briefly ruby are you there yes she is there ruby can you hear us okay we we have uh, what one of our old long distance friends paul from uh, belgium uh paul um uh you you want to make any comment or observation paul doc doctor paul sure you have to un- unmute yourself you have to un- unmute yourself yes yes now it's better hi hello. hi paul <laughs> hello, hello paul <clears throat> mm, i was not prepared to make a, a remarks on this but i think it is good that jai singh uh, gets some attention you should also recognize that at the time he was operating there were hardly any tribals who were, who could count as uh, intellectuals in the classical western sense so it should not surprise us that uh, the tribal question was not did not get much attention in the constitutional de- debates except as tribals as subjects for protection which i think was an unfortunate development because there are many different types of tribes there always were and we if we tend to think about tribes in general we tend to think about tribes as people who live in jungles and who have are rather isolated 
for my own historical research on the whole tribe, I found that certainly there were jungles, but people lived in villages and were having uh, rice culture and were not very isolated, except politically. <clears throat> so that, of course, caused, gave the tribals not a head start, but uh, they, they were easily left out of the discussions on the, on the constitution. Still, I think uh, Jaipal Singh uh, did what he could. Uh, he might have had his, uh, his limitations, but we all have. And uh, he, he was uh, a good leader, and it is said that at the end of his life, he was not recognized very much. But then perhaps politics is like that. That's what I have to say. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Paul. I think oh, yeah. uh, Ruby, uh, thank you, Dr. Paul. I think Doc, uh, Ruby was having some problem with her with her audio, I think. Okay, Ruby, uh, yeah. are you there? Hi, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, yes. you can hear ah, so sorry. Well, Thank you so much, Dr. Barra. It, it's, it's so good to have someone sit you down and tell you about the enormity of this person who was Jaipal Singh Bunda. However much we read it, when we hear it from you narrating it the way you did, you know, it's like this icon in front of us and someone we all emulate, but we don't know how to start relating to him. We're all discovering him at very different stages of our lives. There are many people, many Adivasis who don't even know him yet or don't know his significance. So one of the things that really struck me in Dr. Bara's retellings, which is something a lot of people think about, is that despite him being such a fantastic orator, despite him being so brilliant, he never took the time to write or he didn't care about it or whatever. There is no writing as opposed to what Ambedkar has done, you know. So it's so easy for the Dalits to just fall back on words straight from Ambedkar's mouth. But what do we do? So there has to be like a rebuilding of who he was, a reconstructing of the Adivasi relationship. And I often see that in, any, in every Adivasi um, issue that we are facing, even when it comes to the forest rights in the last two years, for example, anything and everything that, uh, um, sorry, uh, Jaipal Singh Munda has uttered is actually relevant, where he starts in one paragraph where he says, you know, like, land is the bulwark of our people. That itself tells you and explains what forest rights is. I mean, if someone were to rewrite and reimagine what he would have <laughs> said or reacted to this. So for every response, whether it be social, political, um, Jaipal Singh Munda is relevant, but he is not relevant because we've not been able to make him relevant. And I think that is our challenge. That is what uh, Dr. Jojo was also saying, you know, how then do we make him relevant? So just that, and uh, yeah, even what Dr. Virginia Skaka, the questions that perturbed him, those are important things that we need to keep writing. Even like uh, Paul Strumer, when he talks about, you know, it doesn't matter what a contentious person he was, all of us are but then his contribution because of that doesn't mean uh, or doesn't come to nothing. And it's for us to write and do that. I mean, that's my only response or even my uh, ambition perhaps, you know, for all of us to come together and just get that going. So I think Dr. Para should be writing now. He should be the one putting all of this down together. Like he said in the beginning, I've <laughs> spoken, I've had many sessions, I have delivered lectures on him, but I don't know if he's been able to, you know, document all of that. Yeah, but thank you all. Thank you very much for the session. Okay, okay. Uh, is there anything else? Otherwise I'll request uh, Santoshji to uh, uh, give his uh, closing remarks, and uh, I would say, I think I think Santos G has the gold mines. Yes, I think 
on so on uh, Nepal thing. And I am looking forward to visit Ranchi. Can, can I have a word? <laughs> yes, yes, please. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Uh, just before that, you know, we have to learn one lesson from Jaipal Singh. I know he did not write and, uh, you know, we don't have any collect, any collect type of collection of his ideas. But then one thing is there, from his statements and sketchy writings, brief writings, fragments, what we have is, he was just irrepressible. I mean, from the beginning, he was denounced. If you see Rajendra Prasad papers, I mean, some of, us, some of us should follow that. Some of the of his writings are there in National Archives of India and, and, and uh, as a, uh, Rajendra Prasad papers. We have many of his letters. From the beginning, he was denounced, criticized, criticized shouted down, but then he was irrepressible. He always stand and assert his viewpoints. That is one lesson we have to take from him. And that is all of what I have to say here. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vana. Thank you for your uh, responses and uh, insights. So may I, may I request uh, Santoshi? Uh, because I, I, as I was saying, Santoshi has a gold mine. Yes. And uh, yes. I'm, I'm looking forward to explore the gold mines. <laughs> I want to visit <laughs> Ranchi sometime. Um, Thank you. So, Santoshi, um, over to you to um, try to give a uh, concluding remarks. Thank you, Dr. Georgia. Uh, I am very happy that we have a lot of people here. I am very happy that we have a lot of people here. इस पर जो कोविड लॉकडाउन में इतना पॉपुलराइज हो गया है ऑनलाइन सेमिनार्स ऑनलाइन लेक्चर्स एंड जो नया टेक्नोलॉजी है उसने हम लोगों को एक हथियार दिया है कि हम लोग अपना चारों तरफ बिखरे हुए आदिवासी इंटेलेक्चुअल्स भाइयों को एक जगह लाएं और बात करें तो उनका ही दिमाग में आया और मुझे संशय था कि इतना बड़ा आयोजन हो पाएगा लेकिन खास करके अर्जुन राठौर जी फिर जितेंद्र भाई फिर बहुत सारे जो गुजरात के फ्रेंड्स हैं 2018 में मुझे एक अपॉर्चुनिटी मिला सेमिनार फॉर एक लेक्चर देने का जयपाल सिंह के ऊपर और परिचय हुआ और हम लोगों ने चर्चा की और बहुत कुछ आगे बढ़ा फिर डॉक्टर बीपिन जो जो हम सारे लोगों को बुलाया और वहीं से बहुत कुछ चिंतन हो के उभरा और जब हमने बात किया आशीष से तो आशीष ने कहा कि I'll talk to Bipin Jojo and I'll talk to Doctor Varad and maybe we can arrange तो आरंज होते होते हम हमको लगता है कि बहुत ही अच्छा arrangement हो गया so thank you everybody thank you everybody और हमें लगता है जब हम लोग ने शुरू किया था 2016-17 से और एक हमारे साथी जोड़े होंगे प्रफुल लिंडा जी होंगे डॉक्टर आशीष लकड़ा होंगे गुजरात महाराष्ट्र मध्य प्रदेश के बहुत सारे डॉक्टर्स आए थे यहाँ पे शांतिकर बासवाजी लेके आए थे लगभग तीस डॉक्टरों को लेके आए थे और उनका कहना था कि लगभग 400 डॉक्टर्स उनका एसोसिएशन में हैं तो हमने कहा कि क्यों ना हम लोग रेगुलर इस तरह से कुछ कुछ बात करते रहें जो ट्राइबल रेलेवेंट टॉपिक्स हैं उसपे तो धीरे-धीरे धीरे-धीरे उभर के आ रहा है चीजें और हमें खुशी है और ये जो सब्जेक्ट है पॉलिटिकल थॉट ऑफ जयपाल सिंह जैसे पॉलिटिकल थॉट ऑफ नेहरू पढ़ते हैं पॉलिटिकल थॉट ऑफ गांधी पढ़ते हैं पॉलिटिकल थॉट ऑफ अंबेडकर पढ़ते हैं व्हाई नॉट पॉलिटिकल थॉट ऑफ जयपाल सिंह तो इस टाइप का चीजें भी हम लोग चर्चा करने जा रहे हैं मैंने चर्चा कर रहा है डेट इज अ वेरी गुड फ्रेंड वी शुड बी डिस्कस्ड एट द यूनिवर्सिटी लेवल पॉलिटिकल थॉट ऑफ जयपाल सिंह हां 
उसके बाद बीजा भी करें जिसके साथ भी पॉलिटिकल थॉट ऑफ जयपाल सिंह बीजा भी पॉलिटिकल थॉट ऑफ नेहरू या पॉलिटिकल थॉट ऑफ गांधी लेकिन करें तो कहीं ना कहीं तो शुरू करना पड़ेगा वो हम लोगों को ही शुरू करना पड़ेगा बिकॉज देखिए ये एक मैं एक जगह अपनी किताब में लिखा हूँ जो अभी पब्लिश हुआ नहीं है जो गॉड द पावर ऑफ गॉड इज प्रोपोर्शनेट टू द पावर ऑफ द पीपल हु वर्शिप हिम शिवा इज वेरी वेरी पावरफुल बिकॉज द पीपल हु वर्शिप हिम आर पावरफुल और जीजस क्राइफ्ट इज वेरी पावरफुल बिकॉज द पीपल हु वर्शिप हिम आर पावरफुल तो पावर ऑफ आर लीडर और द पावर ऑफ द थॉट ऑफ आर लीडर विल बी पावरफुल इफ वी मेक दम पावरफुल तो इट इज वी अल्टीमेटली लीडर नो बट इज गोइंग टू कम फ्रॉम आउट साइड टू हेल्प आउस एटलीस्ट नो एंजल विल कम टू हेल्प आउस एंड एट मोस्ट गवर्नमेंट विल डू इज फॉर आवर सबिस्टेंस नॉट फॉर ए डिग्निफाइड एंड नॉट मैंने a pride life that we have to ourselves come up and do aur hamara history batata hai ki hum log ladne jante hain jab birsa munda hum log ko dhanutir ka patik hai hamara history batata hai ki hum log likhne jante hain aur bolne jante hain we are excellent writers we are excellent orators ye japal singh munda ka phase hai ye do phase ko hum always bolte hain ki saath mein lena chahiye it is our evolution hum log ko दूसरे लोग को लगता है कि हम लोग मुंडा धनुतीर वाला स्टेज में ही रखें जयपाल सिंह वाला स्टेज में नहीं ले जाए हम लोग को दोनों जरूरी है हम लोग धनुतीर भी लेके चलेंगे और कलम और कुछ भी लेके चलेंगे भाई जब जहां जरूरत है निकाल लेंगे तो दिस इज ए पॉलिटिकल स्टेटमेंट दैट आई मेकिंग बट आई वॉन्ट टू मेक दिस सो एकेडमिक सेशन था बट आई एम मेकिंग ए लिटिल वट एवर लेकिन आई हैव टू मेक इट so um uh, i must uh, thank everyone uh, so over to you dr jojo thank you thank you thank you santosh ji um i think uh, a very important point and it is very important uh, initiative in, uh, in data institute uh, we had been organizing uh, uh samunda memorial lecture and uh, after a few years we we realized and we have been realizing and seeing that yeah vishamunda was our uh, each our great uh, hero and great leader but as as a spokesperson of adivasi in the modern india in the present india i think somehow we have to um uh reignite or or give life to the political thought as, as santosh ji said the political thoughts of jaypal singh so we it, it is necessary for us to start talking or discussing about political thoughts of uh, jaypal singh so we we have have been thinking and uh, about about uh, this that we we have to start either either a lecture series or parallel to uh, virsamunda lecture series uh we we should start like uh, japal singh lecture uh and and not only one lecture in a year or two or few lectures in couple of university or public places is enough but i think we we have to engage um on on the ideas on the vision on the thoughts of japal singh we may not have another japal singh we may not have another ambedkar but the 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 thoughts the legacy they have left behind us i think i think we'll have to work on this and we'll have to engage on those things i think that that's what is most important and i think th this was very very good suggestion to to have this um, lecture uh, on this special event or special day on the eve of his birthday on 18th birthday and uh, very rightfully uh, dr vara agreed i think he was the most a uh, um, authentic person who who has gone through the history uh, uh, so detail and and talked about us uh, talked about him uh, in in this uh, lecture in his lecture so uh, thank you thank you very much uh, thank you all and uh, i i look forward to to uh, take take this deliberation take this engagement on the thoughts of japal singh further and probably we will see how how we can work on that 
Uh, over to Asis. Uh, thank you, Professor Jojo. So I think uh, after a long two hour session, we have come to the end of uh, today's deliberation and discussion. Uh, I, I want to thank all of you for showing tremendous patience, uh, even though we were facing some technical glitches on our side, but I feel that, and um, my sincere thanks to Dr. Bara, who, who again, I have to reiterate who, uh, who uh, agreed to give this lecture on a very short notice. Uh, and my thanks to uh, Santosh for really pushing me to, uh, uh, to, to, to organize this, this lecture. Uh, there are, we have some ideas in our mind, but we will be sharing that with you as and when we, we go along. Um, and thank you again to um, Professor Jojo. So on behalf of Center for Social Justice and Go Governance Tribal in Intellectual Collective India and the Jaipal Singh Fo Foundation in Ranchi, uh, I personally want to thank all of you for coming here and uh, being, very, being a very patient audience and asking some very pertinent questions. I think it gives us a lot of food for thought going ahead as to how can we reflect on the contemporary tribal issues, tribal situation. Um, and uh, I think we, we need more such deliberations, but I think for now, I think we have enough food for thought for, to go ahead and really think and to digest uh, before we meet for the next time. So thank you so much. And I hope you have a good ev evening in whichever part of the world you are. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Assis.